Welcome back to another good video where we're going to be working with instance IDs and we're going to do a clever little task here. We're going to use them in a slightly different way than in the previous two videos. This time I'm going to do the, the idea of remembering an instance on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on a monster and when I click on a monster that monster is now going to be remembered and when I hit the space bar to fire an arrow that's the monster it's going to fire at, whichever one I last clicked on. So it's sort of like I'm selecting a unit. Okay, so let's give this a go and uh, see how it works. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make a global variable. And this global variable is going to be responsible for remembering the last monster that I clicked. So let's go try this. I have this little thing here called game control. I'm going to use this object called the game controller since it has nothing else in it. So in the create event, let's make the variable that's going to remember for me uh, which monster, and I'll call it global.picked. Now, right off the bat, I don't have a monster picked. So I could put zero here, but I'm going to actually be even better than that. I know that those instance methods that we've looked at before, if there is no instance, it's called negative four comes back. So I'm just going to set global pick to negative four. Now you could set it to zero as well, and it will work. But, you know, let's just do it properly here. Negative four means no instance. Now, let's add a little draw event here as well. I may as well just draw this out so you can see what's happening. So I'll do draw set font. Cool font. Draw set color. Now that's not changing my font, font cool. I thought so there, font cool. Let's a little refresher on drawing text out. Draw text. I'll draw it right here at the controller, X, Y, and draw the string of global dot picked. Okay, so it should draw out. Let's put this in the room if it's not already there. So there's, oh, I have a game controller right there. So this actually should work. And let's just give it a quick go to see if it's showing that negative four. Okay, pretty good. There's negative four. I have nobody picked. Now let's make it so when I pick somebody, it remembers their ID. So for this, I'm just gonna go to the click event of the monster. So monster, left pressed, and when I'm left pressed, you see I've already typed the code in for you. When I left press the monster, global.picked is set equal to the ID of this monster. Beautiful. So if the ID of this monster is a million and eighteen, global picked equals a million eighteen. So let's try this out. And remember, since the uh, controller object is always drawing this variable out, as I click, I should see the number changing. And here we go, click, click, click. So you'll see it's now remembering which one I last picked. So this should be a fairly easy task. Let's just do a little reset there. You know, it works nicely. So what am I going to do with this ID variable that I'm remembering? Well, let's go back to the player. Let's do the space bar. Why can I not find space? Aha, there. No coffee today. Okay, spacebar. And now let's do our little routine for firing at who we're keeping track of. So, check to see if our pick is still in the room. Because I click on an object, I have no idea. Maybe that object dies before I hit the spacebar, right? So I click it. I'm remembering that ID. But maybe it goes off the screen, it dies, it gets hit by something else, it's gone. So you have to do a little safety check here. So I'm going to put if instance, and instance exists is really the only one you can do here. If instance exists, global.picked is false, I'm going to get out of here. Okay, I'm not even going to bother continuing the code. Okay, otherwise, make an arrow. So let's make an arrow. Artie, instance, create, from my XY position, 
Let's make an arrow. Let's give Artie some speed. So Artie.speed is 10. Now, Artie.direction. I have to find the direction towards this guy, right? So what I could do is I can do this. Point, direction, and I want to go from me, the player, towards this monster. So my spot is x comma y and the monster spot well remember that is the id of a monster and you can use that id just as if it's the monster itself so watch this beautiful trick here i can say the other x position is global dot picked that's the monster right the id dot x and global dot picked Hey, tell me your why. So, first time you've probably ever seen the double dots. Okay, totally legit. Okay, that's an ID, dot X. That's an ID of a monster, dot Y. Now, it should be pointed out, if global dot picked does not exist in the room anymore, this line will give you an error. That's why it's really important that you do this little safety check here, because if you don't, and this guy is for some reason destroyed or gone, you won't be able to access the X and the Y. At least in the old game makers, you couldn't. You certainly can't access the speed and direction and image angle variables. So safety check all the time. And then already, let's make their image angle equal to its direction. So whatever Artie's direction is, which was just set on this line, that's what Artie's image angle should be too. And this should be it. That should work beautifully. Uh, it's a little example of how to pick. And it's going to work either way with a target or with a auto target. So let's see what happens. So let's just stop them. I hit the S key there. I'll pick that one. There we go. When I hit the space bar, that's the one I'm firing towards. If I pick this one, that's the one it's firing towards. Now, what I'll do is let's pick this guy. And let's let them move again. So uh, I think I had nearest. Or P for pick. I forget what I had as my commands here. There are my commands. Now, my 1,003 guy is gone. He's off the screen. So when I try to hit the space bar, that's the safety check working. If instance exists a thousand or sorry a million and three, well he doesn't exist. It doesn't bother running the code, so that's right there. That was preventing the code from going down and making the arrow. Okay, so just uh, another explanation of why you need to have that in there. If I didn't have that in there, okay, I think you end up getting an error. Okay, so that's good code in there. That's the end of this video. You've got a couple little things you've learned about instance IDs and a whole bunch of challenges uh, you can take a peek at now. So good luck with those. Work hard at them. Watch the solutions. You know, if you can't do them on your own, these instance IDs are uh, something we build on in the next few lessons. So you want to be master of the ID. Thanks for watching.